Welcome to 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, where we take random movies from Metacritic's 15K Plus Movies to randomly watch whether we like it or not. Hello and welcome to episode 15 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. This is Colin. And this is Niall. This is random movie number 548 on Metacritic's all-time movie list. It's a movie called Rewind. It's from 2019, 2020, thereabouts. It's got a meta score of 87 and a user score of 6.8. It was a movie um, that was originally kickstarted back in 2014 for the tune of $175,000. Initially, it was going to be called Rewind to Fast Forward. It's got a couple of accolades, nothing too major at the Tripica Film Festival. It was it was given a special jury mention, and at the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival, it got a documentary jury prize. So, um, what would you say this? Uh, well, it's 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 a tough one because it's it deals with quite sensitive yeah, subjects. It's, it's it's not a rom com. Uh, it's 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 some pretty serious subject matter. Um, yeah, it's it, it it what would you what would you describe it as? It, 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 the tagline is a true crime documentary, but um that that undersells how serious uh, a subject it is really and how bad the crime is. Yeah, so like the premise of the story is, is this uh, Sasha, this I don't know how old he is, probably late 20s, early 30s maybe, probably early late 20s. Uh mm. he basically goes through old uh, films, uh, home films that his dad had uh, started doing when he was quite a young baby, and he, he, they, they used that as a sort of tool to tell a story of uh, the abuse that he suffered. Uh, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what it yeah. is. Yeah, and a lot of the, the the film shown or the clips shown from the, from their family movies um, by itself and by themselves. Uh, appear quite innocuous almost nice um until you think about the setting and the subject that you're discussing here and um everything becomes sinister yeah it's it's about an hour and a half the the, the length of the documentary so like in the first 30 minutes you sort of get a sense of you know his dad henry um bought a video camera and basically documented a lot of stuff and the the house, their house was seen as a, as a family meeting place. And you see mm. lots of old footage of all the members of the family, uh, meeting, meeting up there. You see, uh, the birth of Rebecca, his sister, um, and, and, and just to sort of impact that had on the family and just sort of lots of sort of feels like a lot of normal. Family yeah, family and, and, and the first, first while, the first few clips and video shown, everything is normal. Mm. There's nothing bad has happened yet. Uh, yeah. So everybody appears happy. Everybody's laughing, kidding around. The the two young kids act like there's nothing wrong in the world and everything's fantastic. Um, and then, uh, like, uh, and there's a, there's a, there's a clip in it where the mum's talking about him getting early report cards from school yeah. uh, where teachers are saying he's gifted and he's a super intelligent kid. Then it cuts yeah. to another scene where uh, she's talking about then the teacher started to complain about him, you know, not being able to pay attention, not being able to read like other kids, things like that. And things are things aren't going along the same path as they were before. Um, yeah, I think they mentioned in kindergarten in grade one, he was gifted. Then in grade two, yeah. he started to struggle. And that's obviously warning signs there. And uh, it, it's, it flashes back between the movie, the home footage, home movie mm -hmm. footage, and him interviewing with his mom and talking to his dad and his sister. And it's sort of, it's, it uses that as a tool to tell the story. And it's, you know, it's an age old method of telling the story in, yeah. in documentaries, but yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. And at least it's not as abstract as a night of knowing nothing, obviously. Okay. Um, not not, so, not all stories need a romance part to drag people along. It's not back in um, Titanic or um, <laughs> Pearl Harbor, which your favorite actor. <laughs> You're never going to give up on the Titanic. Never. Issue. It annoys me so much. You need a re re retelling of that story. Um, 
So as you watch the home footage movies, you see the change in his face. You know, like you can see something's going on, and uh, it gets to the point where he, there's obviously something physically wrong on his body, and he goes to a doctor, and yeah, the doctor basically says, "Listen." You don't want to do this. If if you bring this to the police, then it's going to just cause yeah, think, a lot of the issues. That quote was, "You don't want to open that door," um, which <laughs> to me is horrific advice. Terrible. Like, oh, some bad stuff's happened. Um, could be happening still, but you don't want to know about it. It's so weird. It's such it's a, a bizarre the worst thing. thing I've ever heard. Well, I'm guessing this was probably maybe this was the mid '90s, was it? Because it looks like yeah, it would have been yeah. Yeah, it's not that long ago. Yeah, but the, when you you start looking at films and uh, things that people have said and did in the nineties, I don't think we are too far removed from the eighties and the mm, mentality yeah. of shuffling stuff under the carpet and everything. You know, I think. Yeah, and there was there was a a lot of that in this, and a lot of um, burying trauma and the damage that burying trauma causes. <laughs> is kind of one of the themes of this. Yeah, and he actually, there's a part in that first 30 minutes where they're actually burying the guinea pig. <laughs> Just is... the hamster, I think they find. <laughs> I think that was a guinea pig, wasn't it? Or no, maybe it was a hamster. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to have him dug up to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that it was, was interesting. That was dark. Um, it was very dark, the way he was having a conversation, because we were seeing this, obviously, through the film footage, real film footage, and he mm. was talking about, I want to see the, I want to see him again. I want, uh, don't bury him with the box, but let him go into the soil and, and give nutrients to the soil. It was very deep for probably a grade two, grade three student at that point. It was, yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. So, um, I think, yeah, so it's, yeah, as it goes on, obviously the abuse is happening and he gets to become a very troubled boy and he has increasingly dangerous behavior. He's, he uh, threatens to kill himself. He tries to jump out of moving cars. I think his mum was taking him somewhere and telling him oh. that, you know, good people do good things, bad I know people the do bad things. Next. It's, a, it's a kicker. Um, yeah. Is, is this the bit where he turns to the mum after hearing that and says, oh, that's okay. Are you going to kill me now? Yeah. It's such a... For a kid to say that to his mum, yeah, and mean it like, um, and not necessarily think it's a bad thing it is horrific. Yeah, it's just the, the obviously you know what the abuse the abuse he's been handed and the abuse he's suffering. It's his mind is obviously that dark, and and you know mm. his, his his seeing himself at such a low point and uh, and seeing himself as 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 a nothing person basically. That's what obviously abuse does to a kid yeah. at that age. And so, like, it, switch, it switches then to dad in the present day and him chatting to his dad and his dad being quite depressed from it all. Um, I think uh, we we don't know yet, but it's coming around pretty soon who yeah. who is abusing and it becomes a little bit more convoluted. So you kind of think... It goes way back to his dad's dad, like the granddad, and he's talking about the relationship he had with his mom and... Abuse kind of kicked off early in that the mum was abusing mm. the dad at least. Yeah. But the other side, of the other kids in the family were kind of brought up by the mum. Right. He was brought up by the dad who showed love and affection, whereas the mum apparently was a very cold, you know, like a very sharp woman. Um, yeah. You always have to blame the parents, don't you? It always well, it starts somewhere. Back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's his memory. He's he's kind of talking about his bringing brought his childhood. And so yeah, his he's been brought up by his dad, and the, they're taking his mum's side. And so I think there then that it's when they really find out for sure from the therapist back when he's a kid that he is being abused, and yep. uh, there is a there's a sort of a telling of a story where his where he is putting on his underwear on his head or something, his mum is telling him the way oh, he, yeah. the way he put it on. It's just bizarre and just uh, yeah. And, just... and they still had the underwear, so they they, they they must have shown it to the psychiatrist and kept it for whatever reason. But there's stuff yeah. written on it. I, I didn't write it down because I didn't want to. <laughs> but 
But no. yeah, for for a young kid to be putting that on his underwear and then sticking it over his head is some dark stuff. Like it was, it was basically a, I hate myself, I want to die type of stuff. Um, yeah, when, like it's around this time you basically get introduced to the, um, nephew Stuart Larry, Uncle Larry's son. So mm. there's a couple of uncles in, um, that we are introduced to at the start of the movie. There's Uncle Larry and there's Uncle uh, uh, Howard. And Howard, so, yeah. yeah, and so Larry's son, Stuart, comes to stay with them. And then it's so it's revealed that he is abusing the sister because uh, the shrink basically gets her to draw out uh, what Uncle St or nephew Stuart, their cousin, I guess. Yeah, their cousin, Stuart, uh, what's in their secret club because Beck, uh, Becca has said that she has a secret club with Stuart. Oh, I, I think this, this, this is the first time I think that um, Sasha spoke out. I think it was in the back of the car or whatever, and he, he was oh, yeah. annoying his sister, uh, not in a very nice way. And um, the mum says, why, 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 why would you be doing this? Why, what, what, what's that about? And well, he says, well, maybe you should ask Stuart about the private book or club or not the private book club, but the private club. Um, and yeah, that's when things start to come to a head. That's when the mum's like, what? And I, I think yeah. prior to this, there was some suspicion on the father, actually, on Sasha's dad. Yes, of course. Which is that's a horrible that's... thing to be labeled with, you know. Um, so I think there's a massive strain in the family already. Yeah, like, yeah, that's in yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, development. That well, at the start, he's basically he's the finger's been pointed at him, and he's actually being treated like a suspect. But um, it's after you know, Becca's drawings are just horrific mm. oh, um, yeah. of of the secret club, and then um, Sasa. Then you think, okay, bloody hell, it was cousin Stuart all along, but then it's quickly followed up by Sasha's drawings on what Larry, Uncle Larry's been doing to him. And it's just yeah. horrifically graphic, um, explicit to But it doesn't the way end it... there, does it? it? Like, you know, it's another slap and then uh, like five minutes later, yeah, let's mention Howie. Um... Uncle Howie, Uncle Howard was involved too. It's ridiculous. It's just... You get to the point where oh, this is so bad that cousin Stuart's doing it, and then you, you just go, Uncle Larry's doing it too, and then Uncle Howard's doing it. That's just that's horrific, horrendous. Sort of this is around the thirty-hour mark, forty-minute mark of the documentary, and it's just just piles on. And it does. It really it comes on hard and fast around this point where 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 what actually happened is exposed, and they don't slow down. Um, it has to be said at this point, you find out that Uncle Howard has sang for the Pope. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was, you know, apt. It, yeah, really is. Um, no offense. But, <laughs> but but then, then after we find all this out and he, he, he sang for the Pope, all that jazz, um, then we find out about the dad. And not that the dad's done anything wrong because he hasn't. But we find that. But Howard and Larry uh, raped the father repeatedly. Yeah, and, how, is... and Howard abused Larry too. There was just a yeah. whole, and it's it basically it's, it comes down towards that Howard was the most violent and the most aggressive. Uh, Everybody else was a abuser. victim of it, really. Which you no, know, the, the 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 question is never answered is why or how Howard got like that, but. Obviously, there's a trigger for most things, but we don't have that information. And I wouldn't like to speculate because it's, you know, it's yeah. an accusation of a crime, which I wouldn't want to do online. <laughs> yeah, seeing as people are still alive here and yeah, actually yeah. free and, in the world. Mr. Howard is quite litigious, apparently. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got a couple of connections as well. Mm. Um, at this point, I think it's, it's as well, you start thinking, all right, Henry, father of Sasha, you know that Larry and Howard were abusive. Why did you let them into your house? Yeah, um, yeah, the that's mom, a great question. Uh, the and mom this was, is, yeah, sorry. The mom was angry. The mom was so angry at this point 
how how could you how could you let the people into the house and you see a very very sort of terrifically creepy one of the clips of the film footage where henry is in the hallway and yeah. Uncle howard is in the room with sasha sasha's on the ground doing something with a toy or something and there's no noise or anything because there's a voiceover or some sort of sound of or music or something and howard's just saying something to sasha on the ground and henry's looking in and you'll see him walk away and it's just like uh... yeah uh, listen i don't think it's it's a conscious thing from the father or wasn't um i think there's a, a whole heap of repression in his mind so he won't allow himself to think about it because of the damage that's been done to him um but i'd like to think it that way at least anyway yeah so uh, sure, but... yeah i don't know it's you, it's not she's obviously living with that sort of no he, he's definitely a broken man as well the father like yeah um, it's it, it's it's good that he wasn't an abuser it's yeah. problematic that he couldn't put two and two together and say i can't let these molesters near my children um yeah it's interesting but, it's one of the annoying yeah. things from it is you know <laughs> Like you, you can see why the mother is so angry. Like you can, like absolutely oh, yeah. can. Well, it's it's the first question that comes to your mind is like how, why, how. So um, this is all sort of lumped into the second third of the movie and final third of the movie. Mm-hmm. You get to the point where um, you know, uh, Larry, that Uncle Larry is sort of brought in by Detective. Orin and and, chap, yeah. and uh he says oh give uh, i'll take a lie detector test and he <laughs> fails it miserably yeah and then he it's... falls apart because i genuinely believe that larry kind of wanted to be done you know he, he felt guilty about it because why bother take a polygraph at all when you know you're clearly guilty um, true yeah and then might... just admit it straight out and, and after that yeah he, he just absolutely crumbled and went yes i i did this stuff yeah so it's uh, he got 17 to 22 years in prison stewart cousin stewart took a plea deal he got one and a half years it's it's found out at that point that larry abused him as well yeah. so i don't you know that whole larry wanting to get caught and everything i guess yeah he had many layers to him yeah uh, yeah but Howie's a different story again. Um, Howie, yeah. Early on in the in the show, we, we probably should have mentioned that he um, it was the apple of the his mum's eye. He he was a operatic singer. Um, he was a big deal, really, and he had a lot of connections in New York uh, politically and in the world of law and order. So, um, yeah. I believe he was friends with the DA in New York, which yeah. So like it took basically. You know, it, it comes apart in the last third that Howard, you know, we basically get that we get the sort of justice that Sasha and and Uncle Larry gets get justice. And then mm-hmm. Howard is another story. And but it, it's layered on then that he was the most violent and he was the most aggressive, you know, tell anyone and I'll kill you sort of uh, abuser. Um, oh, yeah, that was the, the story. That was the time when the mum, there was a party in their house and the mum went upstairs because yeah, Uncle Howard was with Sasha in the bedroom and, the, like, yeah. and the, the the door was locked in the bedroom and she just knocked on the door and said, oh, are you, you okay in there? And Howard just went, yeah, we're just having uncle and nephew time. And she just didn't bother opening the door. But the, the, was... the thing though, like, you know, it's family. You'd be thinking, well, that's fine. That's just, uh, you know, and people, I suppose people were a little bit more innocent back then. And it's family. Like you'd be thinking, oh, that's that's fine. You know, they're probably just messing. But unfortunately, not so much. No, because so like, it's not something that would jump into your mind. No, and so um, there's another scene near the end where uh, Henry, the dad, is recreating the abuse that oh. his brother gave him in the bathroom. And again, it's just graphical, um, graphical sort of recreation of of his. His abuse that he suffered on, at the hands of his big brother, and you just, oof, yeah, it's hard. That, it's that was a tough one. Explain though. it. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, we're not going into details on that. 
Um, but that was a no. tough one to watch. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it takes forever to get Howard into the, um, into court and whatever. And it, there's a kind of a poignant, nice tender moment where, uh, Sasha's great grandfather, Sasha takes his mm. surname and says, it's because you're such a nice person. And he takes his yarmulke and changes the name and he, uh, has the courage then to, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, says his stuff in court. <laughs> yeah. He faces his know. accuser or not. He accuses his, his, um, tormentor, uh, if you will. Um, and, and there was an interesting piece with, uh, the psychiatrist was saying, so you, you, you got your, uh, granddad's yarmulke and to have enough bravery to say what you said, uh, there, he, he, he stuck, he stuck on the skull cap and, um, then just spoke forcefully and pointed at Howard and said, yes, you did this to me. Yeah. And I think the um, prosecutor, no, the defendant lawyer was going, uh, but what was he, was your abuser shorter or taller than yeah. uncle Howard? And he was just like, no, that was uncle Howard. And it was just yeah. like, he, everybody was just so shocked at his courage and his logic, which is with, with how he was talking in the courtroom. Uh, there's a, there's a bit after, so he testified for like one and a half hours as a, what, 14, 15 year old or something at that point. Cause it took forever to actually get him to well, court. He'd, he'd been interviewed something like 20 times from yeah. various different people in, in law enforcement. No, that's all changed now. Thanks to things, cases like this, but yeah, at the time it was grueling, like yeah. another form of torture to continually relive right. what, the one they went through over and over again. So now they actually videotaped them. How shockingly innovative is that? So yeah. that kids, kids don't have to do it again, you know, yeah. over and over. Yeah, it would seem uh, very basic. There's a poignant clip of his bar mitzvah where he's going. <laughs> He, he comes in dancing and you just know that everybody in the room knows what he's gone through. And he just basically says, yeah, I'm happy. And he says it on the microphone to the crowd in the, in the, in the bar mitzvah. So yeah, it's like, it's I'm happy. It's genuinely believable as well. I, yeah. I think his, his, his standing up for himself in court made that difference. And the psychiatrist said the same, I think, uh, when he did that, it, he started to heal right up to then. He was just in a really crap place. Yeah. So, um, at this point you, you're, you're, you're basically being told that the, the New York temple where uncle Howard sings is backing him up. They have a fundraiser for him. Oh, yeah. just like go fund, the, go fund just blind, pedo, blind, like... yeah, blind support, support of uh, an alleged abuser. I don't think that would happen in 2020, even if you did have, uh, somebody in your flock or your congregation oh, I'm, I'm that you so really sure. respected. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe I might. You have too much faith in humanity. <laughs> yeah, I don't, but uh, that's fine. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so a possible plea deal is, is brought forward and he basically accepts the plea where he, um, doesn't admit to the misdemeanor, but just admits to the four lesser counts. So, so, he, so he gets no time probation. Yeah. He gets probation of 12 oh, years. So 12 years. Sorry. Yeah. 12 years and a tour of the jail. Like, that's not, that's not, that's not justice really, is it? No, it's not. And after that, you get a really slow-mo sort of outro, uh, slow-mo of him kissing Sasha when he was a baby and just sort I, of I like. I did not enjoy that piece. No, uh, it was horrendously slimy and bizarre and just I creepy. guess it's, in, it's intentional, you know, it's there to make you feel uncomfortable, um, yeah. to convey some of the absolute just horror of the whole thing. Um, and, you know, as a video by itself or as a clip by itself, it, it's perfectly fine until you consider the back story to it. It really changes it. And like, you know, it's Sasha's dad probably behind the camera. It's like, do you not see his just as evil in his eyes and just the sliminess of it all? Anyway, that's the sort of last look you get at um, home footage of any notes. After that, you basically get a little update on everybody involved. Larry spent 14 years in prison and now he's out on probation. 
Stewart spent two years and then he died in 2016 at the age of 42. I never really looked into, I don't know if that's public knowledge on the internet or what happened to him, but I'm guessing I, something. I, I, I did a tiny bit of looking, but I'm, I couldn't really find anything. That my guess would be that he may have done himself in, but it's, it's, it's impossible to say. Yeah. Well, it's not impossible to say. I didn't dig deep enough, but yeah, I, I kind of feel sorry a little for, for Stuart as well. So I, it, I wasn't that invested in finding out. Yeah. And then obviously, uh, Uncle Howard is out and about living his life. He's still alive. And there's like a clip of the, I think the temple did a YouTube interview with him a few years ago. And it just shows him uh, pointing out pictures of him with the Pope. There, there was a documentary he got done. Yeah. And that was funded by the church. Amazing, huh? Like, he's copped a plea from child abuse, and yeah. yet they still hold him in high regard. It's just mind bending. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that's, you know, it's not very easy to do a review podcast on this movie just because of the mm. topic involved and the people that are involved. So I don't know. I don't know how you feel, but I, I don't really really care for giving marks at a five, you know, I can, um, yeah, I don't know. It's really weird. To... Yeah. I'd be comfortable with not marking it so much. Um, yeah. I have let... some, I have some pointers about yeah. how they could have produced it better. Nothing to do with the storyline or anything, but just the way, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Cause that, that's the hardest part. I, sh I don't want to score the storyline on this one or the no, plot on this the one. topic yeah topic sorry because no, no. <laughs> yeah and then our second our second category was people and i don't really want to go into that because i think we just mentioned all about the people that are involved yeah uh, just to br mention briefly the sound brackets track it's your usual documentary fair there's a few piano things there's a few synths but yeah produced by else. skywalker sound would you believe oh really from lucas arts yeah that's probably Lucas where Films, the sorry, Lucas Films. That's good. Lucas Arts. Um, that's probably where the majority of the Kickstarter funds went to there. Yeah, yeah. That, that would that wouldn't be cheap. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, just to mention production a little bit, I just sort of I felt that I felt that in the day of net in this time of Netflix and, and series on Netflix of like four to five episodes, I think this film documentary it had its moment of shock when we find out very quickly one after the other who were the abusers in the middle of the movie roughly i think there's been a lot of netflix documentaries structured in a way where you get the sort of shock at the end of the mm. actual documentary and i think perhaps maybe this might have been presented more effectively in a sort of serial format uh, and have the sort of reveal perhaps you know you have that five episodes or four episodes of home videos and you're sort of alluding to stuff and then you're told who were the abusers and you sort of look back then and you're on your viewing of the episodes perhaps of all the creepy ones that you didn't really think were creepy when you looked at it as, as a viewer i'm not saying that nothing that it didn't work for me i'm just saying that it was kind of weird not weird i thought i thought just a little bit unorthodox the, the way it was produced, the way the the topic was was portrayed, and the yeah. timeline it was, it, it kind of hints at the very start what you're you're about to get into, what the story is. It doesn't really hide. Um, I don't know if this was a mini series I would have watched past the first episode because I, I don't enjoy watching <laughs> documentaries yeah. about the subject matter because it's this it is tough. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that they, they did a reasonable job producing it, uh, I think. Um, yeah. I think uh, um, another thing I think I, meant, oh, I I wanted to mention was they didn't really interview Sasha per se. Like, there's a lot of footage of him in the current day mm. talking to people, but you actually don't really scratch the surface of who he is, who he is now. Like, at the end, we just get a picture of him and his uh, wife. They're married, living somewhere, but... I don't know. Perhaps there's a missing element element there. Of yeah, I agree with you there. Um, and maybe it's a, it's a product of the fact that he's the producer and he he scripted it and all that. So perhaps yeah. he didn't think to. Well, maybe I should be, you know, 
focused on a little bit. He focuses on the people that were players in the story uh, outside of him, but not himself, mm. really. Yeah, I wonder if he if he had stepped back and just stepped back and just maybe been a producer and maybe asked for help with the direction or something that maybe he could have taken a more uh, pivotal role in the narration of it in from present day, you know, and making like I don't really know much about him as a person other than his horrific childhood. You he know? was in Shadow Hell, would you believe? Was he? He played young Shal- uh, young Hell. Wow, I didn't know either. Yeah, couple of um tv and movie appearances when he was younger oh Possibly, i didn't know probably before all the court cases kicked off i think um really that's yeah yeah strange nothing big nothing well well I suppose shadow house not small um he, no. three or four movies like uh small appearances huh it's interesting so i guess that's what that was his impetus for doing a documentary of his of his life i guess mm. well all right i guess you know, it's also his his dad and him are big into films and film produ- production. So, mm, true. Anyway, uh, Roger Ebert dot com. Matt Fagerholm uh, got uh, gave it a hundred out of a hundred. Mm. Uh, apart from its numerous profound achievements, Neulinger's picture is an extraordinary work of film analysis, inviting the viewer to study certain encounters frame by frame as a way of revealing their unspoken subtext, which sort of alludes to what we were talking about there. Uh, Movie Nation, Roger Moore gave it, not Roger Moore, James Bond, I'm guessing. (laughs) When I fight, I fight for queen and country. Um, (laughs) 63 out of 100. Uh, So the revelations when they come in Rewind don't have the jolt that they did in Capturing the Freedmen or even in the miniseries about the widely publicized crimes of Or Kelly and Michael Jackson. So again, I think that's alluding to the fact that they may be switching up the the way the story is told, perhaps to be more, uh, to be more, I don't know, to be a different sort of timeline, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's leave it there. Uh, That was a tricky one to to do um, for for this one so let's randomize our next movie and see what comes up let's go to find something that is upbeat and um less yeah. serious come on okay, it's... thunder no it's not going to happen because it's thirteen thousand three hundred and sixty nine. that's not tropic thunder no it is not let's see what it is Maybe we'll get another classic bad movie where we can, you know, really rip it apart. I, I'd love another stick. <laughs> All right, thirteen three six nine is a movie rated forty out of a hundred. Is called The Sisters from twenty two thousand and six. So mm. let's see what the um, the blurb in is on it. Using a college on New York's Upper East Side as their surrogate home and sanctuary. Four siblings struggle to banish the ghost of their dead father and create some semblance of harmony as adults. Suggested by Chekhov's three sisters, this unflinchingly honest drama explores and explodes the myths surrounding family and friendship drama. Yeah. I don't know. Never heard of it. Nope. New to me as well. Uh, yeah. I was looking at the poster there. I thought it was actresses that I knew, but um, no. So that's something to, uh, it's got 40 out of 100 and 5.5 user score. So the ratings are a bit more average than the mm. critic score. All okay. right. Okay. That's fine. No, it's something other than a documentary. Okay. That was episode 15 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. Please share, like, comment, do whatever you can on our podcasts and platforms. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.